least the second one is Illinois. Down, yeah, down at the bottom, yeah. yeah. Numbers are 2, 3, 15, 22. No. Just, just, just bring them down there. I'm, I'm getting more head state here. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back and thank you in advance for your cooperation, but remember to silence your cell phones. Each time we introduce a new dais, please identify yourself and your affiliation the first time you ask a question. Please wait for one of our two mic holders is with you before you ask a question. To get into the rotation, please get their attention or mine. If you have a follow-up, let them know before the mic holder strays from you. There is no flash photography allowed nor recording of any kind, including cell phone and tablet use. Today's sessions, 12 minutes for the Illini, 10 minutes for more head states.
the Victoria Salini are with us. They have a date to play Duquesne on Saturday. Times to be announced. <clears throat> Head coach Brad Underwood is with us with Marcus Damask and Dane Danger. We're going to ask uh, the head coach to make a statement on this game, and then we'll go to questions for all three gentlemen on the dais. Brad, please. Well, obviously, you feel good anytime you get a win in the NCAA tournament. Um, it was um, uh, kind of an inconspicuous start, being down nine nothing in the first minute and a half. I actually thought we played uh, uh, we played okay after that. Uh, you know, we're up one and a half, and so it's a kind of a plus ten uh, for the rest of the half, but. Uh, uh, I give uh, Moorhead a lot of credit. They are extremely well coached. Uh, they have very, very good players. Uh, Riley Minix uh, coming from the NAIA level, doing what he's done uh, this season is, is nothing short of spectacular. It just goes to show there's great players everywhere. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we recruited, we recruited Jordan Lathan, so um, we knew he was a good player. Um, but uh, that's a very good team, and obviously they had a great, great season. So uh, I thought we had a great spurt in the first half, kind of get it up seven or eight. Um, I thought that um, uh, Dane's insertion in the game was obviously critical. Uh, he had 21 uh, season high. Uh, and then, you know, the all-around game of Marcus, um, I think somebody told me he's the 10th player in NCAA tournament history uh, to have a triple-double. Um, that's a pretty special night, and um, uh, so very, very solid. Luke Goody was tremendous off the bench, not just offensively making threes, but but his defense I thought was was very, very good. He provided great energy, and I thought that uh, uh, Dre Gibbs Lawhorn was was spectacular in the first half uh, at both ends of the court. So uh, survive in advance. Uh, we move on, and uh, excited about the opportunity to take on a great Duquesne team. We we'll start right here on the left-hand side, gentlemen. Uh, Adam Teicher, uh, ESPN. This is for you, Brad. Uh, Shannon's played; he's been particularly productive lately, and again today in the first half. How do you explain the way he's played lately? And I'll have one quick follow-up as well. Well, one, he's there's nobody that works harder than him, um, so success doesn't surprise me uh, when you work as hard as Terrence does. Um, you know, when he gets. Uh, uh, he gets most of those points just kind of through the flow. We don't run a lot to him. We don't run a lot of actions. We don't have to. Uh, but he gets going in transition. He's special. He, uh, you know, he gets going to the foul line. Tonight was a quiet night for him at the foul line, five of six. Uh, but uh, when he's making threes, uh, he's, he's, he's awfully good. So uh, nothing surprises me with Terrence. I think he's one of the best players in the country, and, and he's been proving that here in, in this stretch. I wanted to also get your thoughts on that play he made early in the second half. He dove for that loose ball and threw it off the Moorhead kid. You know, it's it's, and these guys will tell you, I've been preaching for a month about the 50-50 the balls, diving on the floor for a loose ball. Um, and I, I tell the story, I, I, I didn't go to the Sweet 16 at Stephen F. Austin because of a di we didn't dive on the floor for a loose ball. Uh, those are the plays that, that separate you. And uh, when, you're, when you're arguably your best player uh, does that, it means, uh, it means a lot. Everybody else has got to step up to that. Got a question on the aisle, then two in the front row here. Go, please. Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald. Dane, uh, just talk about your game, especially the second half. Uh, yeah. Um, no, I try to try to come out, um, you know, do whatever I can to help the team win, you know, uh, whatever that looks like, you know, uh, whether it was me rim running or um, rebounding, you know, I just want to do whatever it takes to help the team win. Um, this is a team effort, so um, we're in it together. Tim Benz from uh, Pittsburgh Tribune Review, Trib Live and Duquesne Radio. Brad, this question is for you. Um, Duquesne, uh, just played a BYU team that, like you guys, is very comfortable playing and winning in the 80s. Uh, they're really good when they get to 70 first. Uh, what do you expect in terms of a contrasting style against Duquesne when you see them next? Well, I, I didn't watch hardly any of that game, and, and I, I, I do know this. I know how well, how well they're coached. Uh, I have so much respect. I've, I've done a lot of clinics over the years with Keith. I've known him back since my junior college days, and, and uh, um, I know his teams are extremely tough. Uh, I know they're going to fight 
to me that was not an upset. That was that was that was not shocking. Um, you, you know, the Atlantic 10's a tremendous league, and to st I think they started 0 and 5, if I'm not correct. Uh, if I'm correct, uh, and then to get to this position, that that's that's on a coach. That's on a coach leading his players in the right direction. So we know we've got a tough game, and um, you know they, they did a great great job. It looks like numeric uh, numerically from the three point line and taking that away from uh, BYU. Um, so yeah, we'll have to play well, no doubt. Right in front. <clears throat> it's from Marcus and Brad. What is Dane giving you in this postseason? Um, seems like the last four six weeks he's just turned it up. Marcus, here first, please. Then Brad. Yeah, uh, Dane just he gives us a presence down low. You know, obviously with with Coleman at the five, it's a different look. So when Dane comes in, our team kind of changes and it it makes teams adapt to what we do. Um, and then you know like. Nine for nine is insane. You know, he went nine for nine. Just the efficiency, efficiency is off the charts. And then even defensively, like I know he, he, he's been blocking shots a lot better. Just his overall presence down low is, is just a hassle for teams. Well, eight rebounds, uh, the block shots. Uh, we know Dane can score. Uh, Dane's always been a, a very, very capable scorer. And, and, uh, uh, but his, his presence, his physicality, uh, we're not here uh, or not winning a Big Ten championship with, without him, what he did last weekend. And uh, uh, just the simple things that he's doing, uh, they're not all post-ups. They're rim runs. They're offensive rebounds. Um, that's doing what we ask. That's being extremely coachable. And, and our team does take on a different personality. You've seen um, you know, Coleman slide to the four and be able to guard perimeter guys a little bit. So uh, his presence in the paint has, has been very impactful. All right, we've got two questions on this side. And we're going to back to Harry over here, and then possibly <laughs> you right there. Go. Um, Anderson Kimball with Takeda Hero Review. Um, Marcus. I, mean, I know you, a lot of the half provinces run through you, but at least three assists in the past three games, what's kind of allowed your playmaking to kind of go to a higher level? Well, I think it starts with just guys hitting shots. You know, you get assists when the guys hit shots. So when guys hit shots, assists kind of rack up. But other than that, I, I'm just trying to trying to play within the game, play with the, in the flow of the game, and, and take what the defense gives me. Um, I just try to, try to not force anything and, and just make the right decisions. Right hand side. Brad Teague, CS Web Sports. This question is for Brad. Brad, you've uh, talked a lot about Draven and just how hard he's worked. Can you just talk about his mindset, just the for a guy that hasn't played much this season to in the Big Ten title game, nail the big shot, and then today, two big threes and play really solid defense for you? Yeah, it's amazing what confidence does. And uh, uh, and that's two, a two way street. My confidence in him, um, I like what he does defensively as much as what he does offensively. And I, I've said it for, for a long time, I think he's a terrific shooter. Uh, both of these guys will tell you, he gives us, he gives us fits on the scouting team, and, and on, the, on the scout team in terms of preparation. Uh, he's earned the right, he's really talented. Uh, he's still learning the game, but uh, uh, I didn't have any problem putting him in today. Right hand side. Julio Rousseau with KCSR. Coach, you mentioned about preaching, and Duquesne were pretty proud of themselves in terms of battling for the 50-50 ball. Are you expecting another sermon tonight in terms of preaching to the guys the importance of 50-50 balls, eliminating second-chance points against a team that yeah. showed they were capable of doing Ab that? Absolutely. We have a saying in our program, it's a moniker we live by everyday guys. So absolutely, I'm going to I'm going to preach those things, and uh, it, it's it's this time of year when you don't do those things that you can go home. In a in a you know their game today was a very very close game. It's a one or one or two possession game. Uh, I did see the one play I saw it just happened to be the side out of bounds play. They stole the ball. Those things are huge, and uh, you know Keith has not been successful as a head coach um, because his teams don't do don't do those things. So uh, we're going to have to match that nasty and that grit. And, and uh, so we'll start, uh, we'll start preaching that uh, tomorrow when we get together again. We're under three minutes to go. Harry's up. Marcus, I wanted to ask you, is this the reason really you came here from Southern Illinois? You wanted to play in this kind of stage and these kind of games? Yeah, it is. Uh, through, the, through the portal and in the process, you know, me and Coach, 
pretty much just had conversations about winning big games in March. You know, that was the number one thing that I was looking for in the school. And I trusted coach and felt like we had the opportunity to do that here. So this is the time that, you know, all the, all the time you put in the gym pays off. Right there. Quickly uh, for Marcus, and then, and then I have one for Dane also. But Marcus, when was the last time you had a triple-double? High school, senior year of high school, I had a couple. Okay, and Dane, did you have any point during the season when you had to kind of get yourself over a hump just in terms of your, your outlook because, you know, you weren't playing as much as you wanted to. Did you struggle at any point? Uh, no, I actually didn't, you know. It was just for me, it was just like – um, the energy I was bringing to the team, you know, uh, which started in practice. Um, you know, I kept myself up by doing things off the court, you know, uh, with Fletch, um, just being in shape, you know, doing workouts, extra cardio before and after practice. Um, just those little things kept me going. So. Have time for two questions, one here, one in the back. Brad, have you figured out that the slower starts digging the holes yet, or have you seen anything that's similar from these last couple games? Yeah, we're going to get a different pregame speech than what I gave today and, and uh, at Ohio State and Nebraska. So that one's 0 for 3. Uh, I failed these guys in that area. So, uh, no, we, we've got to, we've got to, you know, we've got to avoid those. We've got to avoid those. They're, they're, they're smart. They understand that. But it, it's, it's, again, it's, um, it's something that we can't uh, – uh, we can't have moving forward. That's on me. That's my, my job to get them uh, bouncing off the ceilings here as we go. And we did that the last regular season game at Iowa, so we know we're capable. Final question. Okay. Eric Olson with the Associated Press. Marcus, uh, could, could you kind of um, elaborate a little bit on your feelings about getting that triple-double? It's only been done now ten times in the NCAA tournament and just to do it on this stage. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's definitely a cool accomplishment, you know, to kind of have my name up there with, with some of the greats and just, you know, such few people have done it so far. So it's a great accomplishment, but, you know, I'm at this point in my career, I'm really past all the personal accolades, and at this point in March, it's all about winning, and that's really all I'm trying to do. Thank you, gentlemen. Good Thank luck you. Saturday. Thank you.
team. Warhead State University Eagles representing the Ohio Valley Conference is with us now. We have head coach Preston Spradlin along with the student body, Riley Minix, Khalil Thomas, Drew Thilwell, and Jordan Layton. We're going to have the head coach make a statement on this game, and then we'll have questions available for all five representatives of the Eagles on the dais. Preston, please. Uh, well, first off, hats off to uh, Illinois. Very good team, um, and, and they played extremely well and felt like we played well also. But, um, you know, this has been a great experience. Uh, a shout out to the city of Omaha. This has been awesome to be here and um, everything that these guys have dreamed of. But um, really proud of our team, and I thought we played well. And, you know, we tell our team early in the year that there's going to be times that uh, we don't play very well and we win, and that's happened to us a few times this year because of our talent level. Um, and there's going to be times that we play extremely well and we come up short. That's that instance here today. And um, that's a credit to, to Illinois. They're a very good team. But if you're going to have your season end, um, you know, we want to check three boxes. Number one, you want to play well. We did that. Number two, you want to stay together. And I felt like our team really, truly did that despite the score or anything. Um, and then you want to lose to a worthy opponent. And Illinois is a very worthy opponent, so hats off to them. And really proud of our guys, especially these four guys that got an opportunity to come up here and, uh, and talk to you guys. First question right there. Mike Patterson, Omaha World Herald. Coach, just uh, talk about the impact that the uh, Illinois big man, number 42, Dane, had on the game, especially in the second half. Yeah, you know, he had a big impact. And so, you know, again, when we talk about playing well, right, and it's no disrespect, but you had a guy who had hit six threes all year, hit two of them in the first half. Um, we're okay with that, right? You had a guy that averages six points a game, and, and Dane Danger is a good player, come in and have a bigger impact on this game than he had had all year. So we look at that and we say, we made a very good Illinois team play a totally different way than they have played over the last 20-some games to beat us. We look at that as a win, but that's a credit to them, and they're very talented. Uh, they're big, they're strong, they're athletic, and a guy like Dane Danger is very good um, if he gets an opportunity to catch it in his, in his um, spots where he's comfortable. And, and um, so credit them for, for being able to figure that piece out. Next question's on the left-hand side here. Thank you. Brian Milam, WKYT Lexington. The start of the game, is that what you envisioned in terms of threes because they were raining down and then the start where it's the start of the second half when it started to turn? What did you think then? Um, you know, this is a team that's gotten off to a good start in a lot of games, and that's a credit to them because they've made getting practice off to a great start every day very important to them, and they've believed that that would translate. So we've done that all year, and we did it all week leading up to this. Um, they were doing a phenomenal job executing, playing with confidence, um, and, and doing the things on the offensive end. We had six turnovers in this game, 14 assists on 26 made field goals. We hit 11 threes. Um, those are numbers you can win with. Um, in the second half, you know, it kind of got away from us just a little bit. Um, some of our floor balance gave them a few transitions. Um, and again, they kind of scrapped their playbook and, and went ISO. And um, so we're, we're, you know, at the end of the day, made them play a different way. And that's when the game kind of broke open just a little bit. <coughs> Harry? Yeah, Riley, you came here from uh, that lower level, if you know what I mean. But it, but it was for this reason, wasn't it? It was to be able to play on this kind of stage. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I came from an NAI in Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida. And I, I wanted to challenge myself to play at the Division One level and, and make it to this point. And uh, I just credit my teammates for allowing me to come in every day and pushing me and, and just competing at the highest level. We, we got to where I wanted to be, and they allowed my dream to come true. So uh, I'm, I'm truly blessed to be in this position. And that goes for the coaching staff and everybody that's been a part of this program. Uh, it's meant a lot to me, and I'm just, as I said, truly blessed. Go back to Harry, and then we'll go here. 
on the aisle. Yeah. And then three. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the game, the emotion was real on your bench. I mean, you guys could all, I could, you could see it. I just talk about what this experience, maybe Preston and any of the players, what this has been like for this team, this, a veteran team like this. Well, we'll have Khalil answer this first, then Drew, then Jordan. <clears throat> um, I don't know. It's been it's been a, a dream, really. Um, it's just been so fun, like coming to practice every day, being around these guys every day, the bus trips, uh, meals, just everything. It's, it's it was fun. So it was a lot of emotion just off the strength that, not because we lost, but because we we weren't gonna get another day with each other. So um, once we came to that realization, the emotions just they they poured out. Yeah, going off what Khalil said, um, it's just I look at these guys like they're my older brothers. And uh, not being able to just do one more closeout drill or just whatever the case may be, um, I think that that's what hit the most. Like, I don't know when I'll ever be able to on the, on the same basketball court with these guys again. So I just think it's just missing that brotherhood, even just things in the locker room, just, to, just the little things I'm going to miss it. <clears throat> um, for me, it's been a huge blessing. I always wanted to play in March Madness and, and play for a winning head coach. And uh, playing for Coach P has been nothing short of special. Um, I, I wanted to play for a guy fearing coach, and he's he's helped me tremendously with my faith and growing in spirit. And and he always told me God will not. He told me when he was recruiting me, God will not protect you from what He's using to perfect you. And I'm just so thankful for him. And I'm so thankful for this program, and I'm blessed to be here. Right here, thank you. Drew, I remember four years ago, the first day you walked on campus on your recruiting visit. And since that point, you have worked your tail off to get to this point. You are the maestro, you are the point guard. You, you are Mr. Moorhead. You are Mr. Moorhead. How, how special is it to set where you are right now and to go out with these guys, knowing that you've done everything possible. Ooh, um, if you would ask me that quite like if you, if I could see myself in the future doing this, I would tell you no immediately. Um, I would say four years ago, I just wanted to play, I just like two minutes. So just just to be able to do this is like it's special, and I have special guys around me. So it wasn't just me. Um, I have special coaches, you know. I've stuck with them for four years. They've stuck with me for four years. And I really just, I have to give all the credit to God because, like, he made me stick through it. He, he, uh, he made me have patience, and it just, it just paid off. But I, I really can't take all the credit. I've had great teammates throughout the years, a great coach for all four. And uh, I just want to say, Coach P, I love you. Riley, I love you. Khalil, I love you. And J2, I love you. I love you, too. I love you, too. Hi guys, that was really nice. I, I'm Steve Greenberg from the Chicago Sun Times. Uh, I, I'd like, you know, for wh whoever will answer it, I would appreciate it, Preston, if you answered it also. Um, you're old, an old team. You've seen a lot, been around. Uh, you, you were around a lot of the Big Ten. You, you played Purdue, you played Edie, and now you've played Illinois. Uh, I'd like to ask you, you know, how good Illinois is in, in that context, what you what you think are you know are they as good as Purdue for example or what what you see what you think? We're going to have Jordan start. Riley will come next, and then we'll finish this press conference with the answer from Preston. Go ahead, please. Um, I got nothing but, uh, nothing but respect for those guys. They're very well coached. They defend well, and they really crash the boards. They got size at every position. I don't think any team that we played in the Big Ten had that much size at every spot. And they just, they're just just a really good team, and I hope they do well in the tournament. I think their physicality was was top of the charts. Like, they were jamming us off ball screens. They were, they were doing all they could, locking and trailing. Like, it was hard to screen them, stuff like that. And then they were just, as J2 was saying, they were a bigger team, one through five, and not just with a Zach Eady type player, but their point guard, 6'6". Six, six, like, He's backing you down. It's just, it's tough to match up with. And they're a great team, well coached, and, and they just went out there and, and they they could adapt. They could change on the fly. We were blowing up a lot of their stuff and uh, the way we were blitzing the post, they couldn't really get anything out of that. And then 
they went into one-on-one -on -one ball and they had to figure it out and credit to them they did those are two pretty good answers from guys that understand basketball wouldn't you say um, I think what makes them really good you know obviously the, any Big Ten team is going to have size and talent and physicality um, I think they're a very non-conventional team right you look at Marcus Damask he's a, played the four at his last spot and then uh, he plays point guard here you know, they got a guy in, in uh, Ty Rogers who hadn't taken a three all year, and he might bring the ball up. Um, so they're, they're a difficult team to prepare for because they're unique. And um, exactly what these two guys said, you know, give them credit. They found a new way to win a game. They did not beat us here tonight the way that they won uh, the Big Ten tournament, the way that they finished second in that league. They found a new way to do it. And so uh, I give a lot of respect for them and their staff and their players. Uh, for being able to do that. So I think they're a very good team. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Best of luck Thank in the you. future. Thank you. Thank you.